Hey, it's the West of the Lake Cadillac and LaSalle Club with another How To Repair It Yourself video. And if you've watched any of our prior videos, you know that this one tool that we've gotten is going to make this video all the better. Check it out. It's a tripod. We recently took our 1976 Eldorado to the oil change place and had all the fluids changed out in it and got it ready to go. And they discovered the driver's side outer CV boot to be ripped to shreds and needing to be replaced. They did not have the skill set to get that done because they're mostly younger folks who haven't dealt with this before. So we're going to deal with it today with a nice new boot and we'll show you how to do it. With the wheels still on the ground and the lug nuts still attached, you're going to want to take this cotter key out. You bend that cotter key, the little legs of it back, pinch it together, and it pulls right out of the center. Then you take this bolt and loosen it up. And you want to do that because if you wait until you get the wheel off the ground and the tire out of the way, this thing is just going to spin. So you're going to want to do that while it's on the ground so you can loosen it up. Don't remove it, just loosen it up, then jack the car up, put it on jack stands, get your lugs off, and go from there. And now that we've got our hub nut loosened we can go ahead and jack the car up take the tire off and get to work now our cotter key broke don't freak out if yours does it doesn't make any difference you'd have to be a special kind of stupid to reuse a cotter key for the 50 cents that they cost you're going to buy a new one don't risk your life and up next we are removing our slide keepers for the caliper that comes out then this disc brake caliper lifts right off. We use a piece of wire and we tie it up so we don't damage the brake line. Okay, we've taken our rotor off. Now our nut comes off. There's a little uh, grease keeper behind there. You may need to use your pick and get that out and that comes off. And then we'll take the control arm off next. And we're back. We have our axle disassembled now and we're ready to put the new boot on it after we clean things up. But let's show you how we got to this point. We've got this wheel hub, the upper control arm, the lower control arm, and what we did was we removed the bottom of the shock absorber. We lifted this up with a second jack, took the pressure off, removed the bottom of the shock absorber, allows the lower control arm to move freely. We took the bolts off the upper and lower control arms. We threw away the cotter pins because we're getting new ones. Remember, we're not that chintzy. For 50 cents, you're going to save your life. We took the bolts out, and you're going to think, well, I'm stuck here. But just a little bit of pressure here lifts the upper control arm out, allows this to pop out. It falls down enough to allow this entire shaft to come out of here. And then we're going to show you how we go ahead and clean everything up in here make sure that it's all in good shape. It's only a 9,000 mile car. There's no point in replacing this with a questionable quality shaft and CV joint. We're just gonna put a new boot on it. We'll get everything cleaned up and we'll show you how to put the boot on next. And if you'll take a look, we're at the back of this CV joint and we've gone ahead and we've dug around in there a little bit, looked for any kind of dirt, anything that might've been worn or damaged, now, when you first saw this, the boot was completely off. We took the boot off. It was just ripped. And there was no dirt in there. These bearings that are inside of there are perfectly smooth. Everything in there is in absolutely fantastic condition. There is no dirt in there at all. So we're okay with putting a boot back on there and just going back together. We'll show you how that's done. And we've got our shaft cleaned up and in place. We're ready to put our boot on it. However, this is awfully, awfully small and it's never going to go back over this. So, what to do, what to do? Well, there's a guy on the internet who was kind enough to show us a video where he took a funnel and he pushed the boot over the funnel and got it to snap into place because this will stretch out very wide. It took him a long, long time and there was a lot of swearing in that video. He edited it out, but we knew it was there. I wasn't about to go through that. So, I got a tool that is available for doing this and you put the boot on it, it stretches the end of the boot, opens it up, 
and it lets it slide right over this. You simply place the prongs inside the small hole, push the button, and it stretches the boot large enough to get it to go right over this big hub. Now this is really something. I mean, I've never seen anything like that in my life, and I'm Italian. So if you can't buy one of these because they're too expensive, or you can't borrow one from maybe a shop that you know that does this kind of work, maybe you got a friend who's an OBGYN and she'd let you use one. But you'd have to clean it up really good after you are done with it because, you know, you don't want anything to get infected. Okay, so basically what you're doing is you spread this thing out, you push the boot over, you hit the release button, that causes this thing to release, it slides out, and the boot is now on. We can put our bands on it, put our grease in it, and get everything all taken care of. So now we've got our boot on, it's time to put our rings on that hold this in place. And we've got our handy little tool to put it on. Basically what we do is we snap it around here. We uh, pull it to where it's tight, latch the teeth on like this, then use our crimping tool to crimp it down. It's a little bit of a pain in the neck to do it with the camera, worrying about knocking the camera off the tripod and everything else. So I'm just gonna do it and show it to you when it's done. And we have got our boot strapped back on here. You can see the crimp on the lock washer, lock ring. There's also one on the very back that also has one. And it moves the way it's supposed to. It does everything it needs to do. And so we are now going to put this back inside this steering spindle, get the upper and lower control arms hooked back up, put the shock back on, put the brakes back together, and get this thing on the road. And we are now going to put the nut back in. We put our washer on here. We're going to put the nut back on, our hub, tighten it up, put the cotter pin in. Then we'll put our brakes back together, put the wheel on, and we will be ready for a test drive. Remember, we are just going to snug this up right now because otherwise the axle will turn. We'll make our final turn once we get it on the ground. Okay, so I ran out of battery when I was doing this, but now that we're all back together, let's show you what we did because there are a couple of important things that you need to know if you're gonna tackle this job. We're back together, we've got our boot, here in a minute, I'm going to show you about the right kind of clamps to use because there are right clamps and wrong clamps to use on this. Uh, we tightened our top ball joint. We tightened our bottom ball joint. We put new uh, cotter keys in everything. It's important, vitally important when you do this that you use a torque wrench. Use a torque wrench on the brake calipers. Use a torque wrench on the ball joints upper and lower. Use a torque wrench on the spindle nut. Use a torque wrench on everything. And even when you put the tire back on, use a torque wrench and get a good torque wrench. I've gotten the ones from Harbor Freight, eh, not so good. Go get a good torque wrench. Read the reviews if you're gonna buy one online and get a good torque wrench because you want to make sure you've got everything right. You get the torque specifications out of the service manual, which you can get in the uh, on the internet. There are all different kinds of places that you can get the torque specifications because everything is different. So it was a pretty easy job. I mean, it was dirty, but we had the time of our life. The boot works fine. We're going to put the tire back on, and then we're going to take it out for a test drive, and everything is going to be perfect. Let's talk for a second about the type of clamps that you put on these uniboots. There are two different types of clamps. There's the ones that came with these, and then there's this type. The ones that came with these, I can't show you because when I used them, they broke. Why? Because they always break. This is the tool that you use to put those on. I can show you how to use it, but don't use those. They're the ones where you wind it with a strap, and then you cut it and crimp it and tap it over with the screwdriver and a hammer you can see a hundred youtube videos on those they always break 
this is what came on the car. This is what Cadillac used when they put those boots on that car back in the day. And that requires this clamp and this tool. And basically what you do is you take this boot, the, the clamp on the boot, and you put it on there as tight as you can possibly get it. Get the three pins into the hole and it feels like it's going to be loose and you're like but that's a waste that's not going to do anything this is the better way to go this one's going to break almost every time and if it doesn't break it's going to roll around on there and be loose and the boot's going to come loose this while it may feel a little bit loose once you get it as tight as you can then at that point you take this tool you put it around here and i'm not going to do it because i want to save this i don't want to ruin it and you squeeze it the little center piece of this comes down. Let's see if I can get it with some better light. The little center piece of this comes down and it squeezes those ears together and pushes down on this and it makes a perfect crimp. And it works every single time and it never comes loose. So definitely do yourself a favor. Buy this because it's a really good boot. But go get separate clamps, which you can get at any auto parts store, Amazon, anything else. These tools are available at Amazon, and just avoid these. We're the West of the Lake Region Cadillac and LaSalle Club in the Chicago area. We make these videos to help you fix your classic Cadillac if you want to do it yourself or if you can't find a mechanic willing to work on older cars. Please like and subscribe to our videos. The more you subscribe, the more videos we can produce. If you have any questions or would like us to make a video showing how to repair something on your car, please drop us an email at westofthelakeclc at gmail.com or leave a comment below. We'll do our best to get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching.